Hello everyone and welcome back. My name is Cypher Littles and I'm going to be doing a Scale 5 or a Shortcuts a Lot 5, version 5 tutorial today discussing the character map. So one of the features of Scale 5 is that it allows you to use different glyphs, ligatures, swashes, and flourishes to make your work look very unique and different. So the font that I'm actually using today is called Vintage Party. So let's get started. Okay, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the library. It's in top bar two. This is top bar one up here, and this is top bar two. So in top bar two, I'm going to select this. And your My Library is actually going to show you all of the shapes that you can use in the library. And it's a lot of different items you can use that you can add. This is something that a lot of people don't know about, but all of these different, like even with the states, tags, symbols and these are called flourishes as well so you can use these flourishes in your project so it's kind of like clip arts and shapes okay so you have that but what we're going to be working with is we're actually going to be working in the font section since vintage party starts with a v there's a couple ways that you can look for it you can actually drag like this to see all of the fonts you have in your library or you can actually go to V where Vintage Party is. We're going to click Vintage, Vintage Party and you can actually add it to your favorites by clicking this heart. So the next time you go up here, go to my favorites and there's Vintage Party. So that is how you add it. So we're going to go to the letter V select vintage party okay so we went over those things now I want you to take a look at vintage party I'm actually gonna make it much bigger so that you can see okay these this is right this right here is like the regular lettering of vintage party and these are all of the lowercase of the regular writing but if you scroll down in your character map you will see what we call alternates and see, these are the alternate versions of the same letters. So um, uppercase and lowercase. So what we're going to do, we're going to do a couple names. The first name that I'm going to do, I'm going to do Alice. So Alice, I like the font. Let's see, I like the, is this is, I mean, this can get really, really hairy. What I'm going to do first is click in column A or column one. And I'm going to just type Alice in the regular font. Okay. So this is how it looks if you just type it without the ligatures and special characters. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is click the T again, and I'm going to put my cursor on the mat. So I don't want this A, I actually want the ligature A. And I saw it and it was really pretty. Okay, so what we do is after we have the cursor on our mat, where did that pretty A go? This is the fun part. This is the part that takes a little bit of time because it's so, there it is. It's so many choices. So I'm gonna click A. And then the L that I want to use, let's see. Do I want to use a regular L? If I use this L, it won't look right. So what I have to do is just click on it and backspace. So what I'm going to do is do the A and I'm going to type a regular L. Go back here, type a regular L and I, I don't want a fancy I, but I do want an I that is short. So let's see what kind of eyes we have. Oh, that's a pretty I. If that flourish right here wasn't in the way, I can get away with using that I. So let's take a look at our eyes. Look like we'll be using a regular eye. Let's see how that looks. Okay, that will work. And then the next one is a C. And there's different C's, but I think we're just going to do a regular C. And then we add a flourish for the E. Yep, so we're going to do a regular C. Let's click here 
regular C. And then my E, I think we're gonna use this. We have this E. And this is the fun part, but this takes the most time because like I can even use this E, but then that E will actually run into the C. So I think we're going to use the E that we went with originally. There we go. Okay, so now that's a different variation of Alice there. And you see it looks totally different, totally different. So I'm going to delete this one. We're going to try another name. Let's try... Let's see. Let's see if I could find a pretty beginning letter. That will determine what kind of name I do. But it's very simple to use your special characters. All fonts do not come with special characters. But what I have noticed is that since I've been looking, some of my favorite fonts actually have special characters that I knew nothing about. So that's been really cool to find out that some of my favorite fonts had extra characters to make it look even more unique. Okay, so let's do, let's see. I wanna do a, a, a long name, maybe Alexandria. If we're gonna do Alexandria, I'm gonna get that flourish A. That's the regular A. Let's see. There we go. Okay, there's my flourish A. And then we're going to do L, E. And I wonder how an X will look. That's one of the reasons why I like the X ligatures. See, I absolutely love that. Alexand. Here we're going to do A. A, and then we actually have room for a ligature in. Oh yeah, that looks good. It's turning out really well. Okay, and then I'm going to do a regular D. I don't know why it does that sometimes, but there we go. D, R, I, and then we're going to do an A with a flourish. Let's check out down here. A with a flourish. How would that look? Uh, I guess that's okay. Not a huge fan because it's so much longer on the end. Okay. Let's see if I can erase it. Let's go to undo. There we go. And let's choose another A. If you actually like this font, I'm going to include a link for you to get this font. Oh. This is a nice A. I think I like that one better. Okay, so now we have that. Click in column one, column A. Hold on your shift button to make it bigger. And we have Alexandria, okay? So now we have this. Sometimes different fonts come with swashes. And what swashes are is like that little symbol that you see like on baseball shirts. I don't think Vintage Party has any, oh yeah. These are called swashes. So these can actually be added to your work as well. So if you want to click and maybe Lee, let's see. Let's just try one just to see. Click off the mat. And then you can put that down here. And I'm not going to hold on shift because I just want to 
do just that okay so now that we have Alexandria now you can play with so many different options with this we have went over the character map the different um, ligatures the different symbols you even have like you have this right here you can do this hold on shift and do like that on each side or you have like the equal sign the plus sign sometimes some of them come with different symbols that you can actually use just kind of giving it a good browse but that's all for this one we're going to delete that okay so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to select all of it we're going to close this out for a second and I want to actually add a shadow layer so my shadow layer, my first layer, I want it to be 1.5, maybe a mint, that chocolate and mint. will look really good together. Perfect. And then my layer count, I can probably change to white. We're going to go up to, and that's actually pretty in itself. Uh, let's do black for our variants. And don't worry about it not being black here. You can actually turn it black once you actually convert it over to Cricut or to Cameo. For some reason with the variants, whatever the colors are, sometimes it kind of lays on top of it and it kind of blends in with the layer. But that actually looks good. So there is Alexandra, you guys. Now what I would normally do is I would actually add this to a shirt. So what I would do is I will go to edit, select all, file, export, and I'm going to export this as a PNG for this exercise. I may have time to actually export it to Cricut so you guys can see how the layers will be. Um, let's see. Alexandria. Let's do scal 5. Scal 5 Alexandria. Okay. So we save it as a PNG, transparent background, 172 DPI, go to OK. There we have it. And then I'm going to go to Edit, Select All again, File, Export, and we're going to do SCAL 5 Alexandria SVG. Make sure the format is saved as SVG. And double check to make sure selection only and design space compatible is there. Okay, so we have that now. Now we're going to move over to our Cricut Design Space Mat. Move over to our Cricut Design Space Mat. And I'm going to go to Upload in column A. Upload Image, Browse, Alexandria, SVG. save because what I'm going to show you now is going to be very important once you actually bring your fonts over you actually need to weld these parts if you do not weld these parts the machine will cut it so what we're going to do is we're going to hold down our shift button and select all of the lettering and go to weld well hold on go to group we need to ungroup everything first so we're going to ungroup it. Then we're going to select all of the lettering and weld. There we go. Okay. So the layers that we have, I'm going to show you the bottommost layer. We need to ungroup this as well. Make sure you ungroup that. You want all of them separate when you're working with your layers. So the bottommost layer is going to be this layer. So we're going to do arrange, send to the back. Then we're going to go to Arrange, Move Down. This right here, we're going to move up. So Arrange, move to the front. And then Alexandria is fine right there. Okay, so now we have this set up. So now we have the bottommost layer. Where did it go? Right here. Okay, that's the bottommost layer. Then we have this, then we have that, then we have that. 
Okay, and even with the brown, I could actually weld the brown together since it's a top. So we have three layers. So we're going to go to make it. And more than likely, if you don't use this as a cold project, which is with regular vinyl, you can actually use it as a um, HTV to put an HTV on the name on the shirt. And if you do that, what you want to do is make sure that all of your mats are mirrored. With HTV, the shiny side goes down, dull side up. And if you click mirror image for one, that doesn't automatically do it for the other. So you have to make sure that this green selection here, mirror, is selected for all three layers. But if you're just going to cut a vinyl project and probably possibly put this on a cold project, maybe a cup or maybe um, a notebook of some sort, then this would be it. So this would be your brown mat. This would be your shadow. This would be your bottom most. So after you cut all three pieces, you will lay on your uh, transfer paper. You will lay this first. Then you will lay Alexandria on top of your mint shadow. Then you will lay the both of them on top of this shadow and go back. Maybe suppose you want to change colors real quick. Let's focus on that. Go to undo. Okay, so maybe I want it in the top bar. You actually select it. You go in the top bar. Maybe I want to do a purple and then do my mints. Mm, purple and yellow. Yeah, that'll work. And then my bottom layer, I can do black. So this is why I said that once you get over to Cricut Design Space or Cameo, you can actually control the different colors that you use. It doesn't matter how it looks into style. It just saves it that way. So now we have our wording. Then we put that on top of the yellow and we put both of them on top of the black. So hopefully this, this tutorial gave you guys some insight on how to use the character maps um, within the Scal 5 and also how to create this beautiful design. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel. And if you would like this font yourself, I'll also include a link to get this font. And for more details about this particular lesson, please check out the description box so you can get the details of this lesson on how I did this. And I catch you guys in the next tutorial.